Hey everybody, it's Christy with Christy Cole Artistry. Thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you to all of my subscribers. Um, I really appreciate you and um, uh, hope you continue to watch my videos and comment because I love your comments. Um, before we start tonight's video, and it's going to be the video that I had promised, we're going to do um, one of the space paintings. So we're going to take that green one and we're going to start adding some of the galaxy um, planets and things like that on it tonight. I'm only going to do just a quick portion of it um, to show you how I do it because it, it is time consuming and then once I'm done showing you that then I'll finish it up off camera and I'll show you the final result. Before I start that though I wanted to show you the dry results of our red white and blue painting from our last video. Um, it has dried. It does not have its gloss on yet but I wanted to show you this painting because it is just shimmering. Um, I really like the way it came out. It doesn't look like red, white, and blue, like you, you know, like you're thinking, but it's so shiny already with the silver. I love it. So when it gets its um, high gloss coat, it'll be absolutely beautiful. So um, as you can tell, or if you just heard that, that is my air compressor that's going on and off. Um, getting ready for our airbrush portion of our painting tonight. So give me a second and we'll get started. I'll be right back. Okay, so here is our painting that we did the, the green cup pour on. And again, this is a 14 by 14 inch square. Um, we've already done the cup pour portion, it's dry, and I've cut out my um, circles that are going to be for my planet. And now we're going to start some of the airbrushing on this one. So what I've done is I have my two airbrushes here, and I have attached my white airbrush paint, which is mixed with the um, reducer and the uh, Createx, I think it is, paint. Um, I'll have to look. I'll put it in the description. But anyway, so I've mixed my white already in the jar, and these jars are new jars. My, br my airbrushes are older, so they don't quite fit, so I do have to tape them on. I don't like using the little cup thing, but I will use it every once in a while. Um, I just think this works better for me. So basically what I do is, uh, like I said, my air compressor is on, um, and my brush it's ready. We're going to start with the white. And then what I do is I have a an old canvas on the side here, right here that I use, and I start my brush out on there um, just to make sure that any leftover water or really there shouldn't be any water, but if there is or old paint, um, you know, I go from black to white on a lot of these. And um, I just spray it out so that I can get the spray the way I want it. And then once I get the spray where I want it, I double check my how my airbrush is set up. And then we'll start in a second here. Now normally I'm wearing a mask because the spray does get in your face and in your lungs and in your nose. Um, but I can't breathe and you can't hear me if I do wear my mask, so I just have my goggles on. So um, I have marked out where I want to put white and where I want to put my black. And then once this dries, which takes minutes, um, I will take my pens, I have pens, um, paint pens, and I will make my um, line around here to um, kind of, um, how do I want to say it? To like to find that area because it does get kind of light and fluffy you might say so and I know there's a lot of paintbrush people out there um, airbrush people out there that do this more than I do this is new to me this is the way I've learned how to do it and it works for me so here we go again just checking my brush making sure everything is tight and where I want it okay now we're gonna start and again, because I'm doing black and white, I don't want it to be black here and white here. I'm going to blend this area in and this area in here um, to make sure that it comes out 
um, blended, not just stark. So here we go. Now, as you see, I'm getting a little closer at the beginning to define this whole area. And then I'm going to spray out a little bit to kind of um, make this lighter and brighter. Um, and I have to be careful because sometimes my, <laughs> my jars fall off of here. So I'm trying to be careful and watch what I'm doing. All right, here we go. Like it a little little bit more defined right here but I think they're like this the way it is and you see once in a while you get these little dots in there of where the and that's why I keep testing my brush I can take those out or I can leave them in and they'll look like uh, little stars all right so now I'm gonna do the bottom one And you can see the bottom one more because the uh, paint on the bottom one is a lot darker. So I think that's good on that one. Now, what we're going to do, I was going to use a different brush, but I think I'm just going to take this off. I don't know. So that there is going to be leftover white in here and we're going to use that to our advantage for, for a little bit anyway because now when we mix the two we'll have the gray that we need for the transition on both sides so we'll see how that works out much going on here. This is why it's hard to do airbrushing unless you have a decent place to do it. So I'm just going to put on the black bottle onto the brush that already had the white in it. And then I need to tape it on there. So I just pull a piece of tape off rip it in half and then I secure oh, secure the top portion this way I don't have to buy a new gun when because the bottles you know go to a different gun I just tape them on because I'm not going to waste them there we go I mean, I could just hold it on there, but I like to let go of it, so. All right, so now we've got that on. i got to turn the compressor back on. And then we're going to spray it out. So now we've got, see the whites coming out? I think you can see that. So when I see it turn to gray, like now. So I can use some of that now. I'm going to hold off doing this one because I want to flip this over. So I'm going to start with this one. really quick. See? I mean you can see how quickly it dries. 
So I'm just going to turn this one this way so that I can do the black area on this one. This one really goes in the back, like so. And then we're gonna let that one sit and dry. So that's kind of the basics of how I start my my um, galaxy painting. So I'm gonna show you again this one. So again, we did the black, we did the white. I took my pins and did the lines. And then we do the splattering, and then we do stars wherever we want. When we do the stars, there's two ways of doing them, really, that I've seen. Um, first is using your airbrush. And so you do your airbrush. Let's see if you can see it on the black. So if you, you do your airbrush and go kind of close and just do a, a pinpoint and a pinpoint, like so, and then like that and that. Problem is, I, I type all day long, so I have a lot of problems with my wrists and holding things steady without shaking. So I prefer to um, paint them on with my paint brushes and my paint pens. And then use you can use the air gun or the airbrush other ways. So like if I was going to do um, if I was just going to do one of those stars. Okay, so what I'm going to do is pick the area. I'm just going to run, you know, my design like so, okay? And then what I'm going to do is, if I had the air gun, I would maybe, let me make it a little bigger. Sure, when I want it to work. Okay, so say this is my star. It's not, because it's all... I'm getting crooked. But then I could do an air spray out, out in the center and it would look like it's a ray of light. Um, you can also, um, if you're, my, my little pinpoints aren't very pinpointed. See how my hand shakes? But you could, if you wanted to, take and make your star spots Take your star spots like so and go around, come on, go around and make your tiny little spots. But again, mine would get too big. Um, I don't have enough control in my wrist to make them tiny. They, they'd all end up huge. Um, so I prefer to do what I see many people doing, which is taking some sort of stiff brush in the um, white paint, okay, I just pour this into a, a little container. Sometimes I use it right out of the container. And you just basically brush things on. Now, I've seen people use large brushes, and I've seen people use uh, toothbrushes. So I do have a toothbrush that I use sometimes. And you get these little spatters like, th like so, okay? Then, if you want your... your um, this one. If you want your your designs like here and here, you need to actually purchase stencils unless you want to cut one out yourself, which I tried to do and trust me it did not work. Um, I purchased my stencils and um, I use them in different ways all over my canvases. So that is how I create the galaxy paintings. So, short little tutorial, and like I said, I will show you, when this one is all done, I will show you the final results, oh, results of that one, but for now, because it will need touch-ups, but for now, let's see if we can just take off this portion, and I cut these out of the plastic that I have laying around. And then I reuse them. So now that they have tape on them, I just stick them to a, a canvas that still is wrapped. And that way I can grab them off of that plastic canvas. 
So this is what our planets look like so far. I will take these pins, which are my um, Unipasca paint pins. I got these at, Hub or at uh, Blick. And I'll take them, you shake them up just like you do any other paint pen. And then they have the little tip and you just tap it to get it to go. Okay, I bought fine tip because when I'm doing around here to define this, I want a fine tip. And also if I decide, excuse me, if I decide to put my spots on one by one, this is a great tiny uh, paint pen to do it with. The bigger ones don't work very well. So I like that. And then, like I said, when I'm doing my, when I do my stars, um, I like to use the paint pens because they're just easier for me to control. And then what I'll do is sometimes I'll spray them out, like I said, like from the center, kind of like this, and that way it looks like they're kind of glowing. But right now, I like what's going on here. We've got a good start here to both of our little planets. And um, I'll show you when I'm done with this painting so you can see what it looks like. Before I forget, sorry, I came back. Um, before I forget, I had one more little tip is, um, again, I use, like I said, I use an old canvas and I happen to have this one. That was our, was a beautiful painting till it slid off the canvas. Um, so I use this one, but a, a quick little tip is I use this one for all like my practices and stuff and for blowing out my brushes, okay? And a, a good tip so that you can use this one for like a really long time is I keep um, wipes handy. And what I will do is when, they're great for cleaning your hands too, but when, when I'm done, if I um, am done with, you know, whatever I've tested, I just use these. And if you get them quite quickly, you can clean off all of the paint that you were practicing with and that will give you um you know keep this canvas longer so that you can keep using it for testing so that's what i do is i will every once in a while just wipe a bit of the canvas off with a couple of wipes and then let it dry and then i can use it over and over and over and over again as you see i've used purple i've used pink i've been using a lot of the black and white on here lately and it's just nice to have, just have one canvas that I can practice on um, over and over again without it getting too thick with paint. So there, that's good. So thank you for joining me for this short little tutorial on how I do airbrushing. Like I said, people have their own way of painting and doing their art. I, my way might not be the, the way people do it, but that's the way it works for me and that's why I'm doing it this way. Um, thank you for joining me again, and until my next video in three days, please take care of yourselves and take care of each other.